Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Tech PC build video. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be assembling our Spectrum uh, Pulse gaming PC from our Spectrum lineup. Uh, this is a highly configurable unit. Uh, this is just one of the configurations we have uh, chosen for today's video. Uh, we'll have more information linked in the description below, as well as, of course, available at our website, techdev.com. I will go over our reasoning behind our component choices and the options we offer in this unit today. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into today's build. All right, so let's start with the motherboard here. As you guys can see, we went, went with the ASRock uh, B450M uh, AC, meaning it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, this is revision 2.0. The reason why we selected this board is it offers a great expandability for M.2 and uh, SATA drives. And it is a B-series board, meaning we can overclock the CPU as well as the memory. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull it out of the uh, ESD protective bag here. And lay it on the desk. So just a quick overview of the board here for you guys. If you've never looked at this board or a board uh, that's AM4, of course, we have our CPU socket in the center here with our VRM. This is our eight pin CPU EPS. This is our CPU uh, cooling fan. Uh, this is the fan header here. It's a four pin PWM. This is our rear chassis PWM. And this is uh, another three pin uh, DC fan header down there. We have four uh, RAM slots here for DDR4. We have our rear IO. We have our front panel USB 3.0. We have our 24 pin motherboard uh, power connector there. We have our front panel audio. We have various RGB, so five volt, 12 volt. Uh, another USB here. We have two USB uh, 2.0 headers here and our front panel connectors right here. These are our SATA ports for two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives. And this is our 16X PCIe slot. And this is a 4X, uh, even though it's a 16X full size, it's only uh, pinned for a 4X PCIe slot for expansion cards. And our M.2 uh, SSD slot right here. Uh, so the only accessories we need from the ones on the right hand side here today, of course, are Wi Fi and Bluetooth antennas, which we'll set aside to install after the PC is built. We're gonna need our rear IO shield, which we're gonna install again uh, later on in the build, but this will be when we are putting the board in the case. We'll install this first. Then we're gonna need uh, the screw for our M.2 SSD. And we're not gonna use these today because we don't have any SATA drives, but if you have SATA drives, you will need these for your uh, drives there. So the next part we selected was the AMD Ryzen 7 a 5700X. Uh, this is the top configuration for this build here. Uh, you can, of course, select the lower end, uh, Ryzen 5 5500, a great budget option, uh, but this is going to be our fully spec'd out uh, configuration for this one here. So we have the 5700X. Uh, because it is an X series processor, it does not come with a CPU cooler. And for our CPU cooler here, we have our upgraded option the Thermalrite Assassin X120RSE in RGB. This is a great cooler and it's a great looking cooler. It's gonna be quiet, keep everything performing well while looking great. And as far as RAM goes, we have a lot of options uh, for RAM when it comes to our configurations. On this one, we just went with the uh, default 16 gig kit of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM uh, in dual channel to better utilize our processor here. We do offer up to 32 gigs of RAM with RGB, without RGB, whatever you guys are looking for, you can configure on uh, our build there. And for storage, we went with the default one terabyte M.2 SSD. We do offer uh, either PCIe 4, 3.0, and up to two terabytes of storage by default uh, configurable on this machine here. Let's go ahead and unbox our processor and begin our installation process for these parts here. So we're gonna open up our CPU clamshell and you will notice there's gonna be a small triangle on the bottom corner here, on the bottom right here. And there's gonna be a small triangle right here as well. 
both on the motherboard as well as on the actual socket itself. Uh, those are our indicators of which way the CPU should be oriented. So we're gonna lift this bar up in order to open the socket, line up our triangles, drop the CPU in. I like to give it just a little wiggle with my finger to make sure it's in, and then we're gonna close it down. So that's our CPU installed. We go ahead and move some of this packaging out of the way. Uh, the very next thing I'm gonna do is gonna be the RAM uh, because our cooler might get in the way a little bit. So we're gonna do our RAM first and then our cooler. Uh, so again, depending on how many RAM sticks you have, you may use uh, different slots on the motherboard here. We'll go over that in just a second. All right, so we've got our RAM here. Um, this is a dual channel kit, like I said, so there's two sticks. Uh, it is labeled on the motherboard or in the manual, which ones you wanna use. We're gonna be using A2 and B2. So to install the RAM, you're gonna find our center uh, little cutout here and line it up with the cutout on the motherboard. That's backwards. It'll only go in one way. If you go to install it like I am right now and there's a lot of pressure and it's not clicking in, just like that, uh, make sure you have the RAM oriented the correct direction. That's our RAM installed. We're now gonna go ahead and just quickly install our one terabyte M.2 SSD. It is keyed, it will only slot in one way. So we're gonna go ahead and slot it in. And then take the included screw that came with our motherboard and secure it in its slot. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the four screws, two on each side uh, for the stock AM4 mounting bracket. We're gonna go ahead and open up our cooler. All right, so we've got our cooler here, along with all of our hardware and our fan. The fan we're gonna leave off for now. And here's our instruction booklet. Uh, this is AM4, so we're gonna follow the AM4 instructions. Uh, if you're using LGA 1150 or 1700 or 1200, uh, the instructions are as follows, of course, in here. So for AM4, because we're using the stock backplate, all we need are these screws here, the fan clips, and then the uh, retention brackets. And our thermal paste, of course. So this is that Intel backplate for either 1700, 1200, or 1150X, uh, which again, we're not gonna be using, so we can just set this aside. All right, so the very first step is putting uh, these little spacers on. They are labeled AM4. The AM4 ones will go up. The side that says AM4 will go up. And we're gonna go ahead and secure the bracket just like that on both sides. I'm gonna go through and hand thread these just to start, and then I'll go through and tighten them down with a screwdriver after. It's important that you make sure these are tight, not super, super tight, but at least hand tight, just so the bracket can't wiggle uh, and cause your mount to come loose and you might get bad temperatures, uh, something like that. There we go, so that's one side installed. We're just gonna repeat the same process. And again, uh, depends on the cooler you use. It may be different, it may be the same. Uh, make sure you reference your manual. You don't wanna install your cooler wrong. It could make your unit not run at all. Um, you could damage something. Definitely wanna be careful in this, this process.
All right, so that's our bracket installed. We're now going to go ahead and put a nice bead of thermal paste down. There's a million different ways to do it. Everyone's gonna tell you your way's wrong or right. Um, to be honest with you, you can't really have too much. You can only have too little. Of course, unless it's literally spilling everywhere. Some people like to spread it with a little tool, uh, but as long as you get even mounting pressure, it won't really matter uh, how you install it or what way you do it. All right, don't forget, of course, to peel off the protective sticker on the bottom or else this CPU will 100% overheat. You have to take the cooler back off, take the sticker off, reapply thermal paste, remount it, uh, and the whole process again. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and place it on and just hand thread these for now just to get them started. And now we're gonna come through with the screwdriver and go back and forth to get even mounting pressure. So I like, what I like to do is go hand tight and then a quarter turn past. All right, that's our CPU cooler mounted. We do have to take the fan clips out now and install our fan. You could do it theoretically on either side, the front or the back. I prefer to do the front. Uh, one thing to remember when it comes to any fan mounts, whether it's in the case or on the cooler, when you see the grill here, so these little steps right here, this is where the air is going to push out of. Anytime you see just blades, unless it's a reverse fan, this is gonna be where air is intaked through. Uh, general rule of thumb that I believe in and most people believe in, if you have something directly in front of the fan blades, it will make it louder. It is of course going to be uh, forcing turbulent air off of these uh, metal fins here. So if we put it in the front, it theoretically uh, and in practice will be quieter than if we put it in the back. So to mount our fan, we're going to install these clips on the front side of the holes, on both sides, just clicking them in where you'd normally put screws in. All right, now we're gonna line up the fan and pull the clip onto the heat sink. We'll have a little channel that it's going to snap and hook into, just like that. All right, it's not quite level, which is something that will happen very often on these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and level it out. It's more of a cosmetic thing. As long as it's on there, uh, it will cool your CPU adequately. All right, there we are. So we have two cables here. Uh, this one right here is going to be our RGB header. And this one right here is our CPU uh, cooling fan header. So we're gonna plug that in right below here and tuck this wire out of the way so it's not visible. Uh, as far as this RGB header goes, I'm not gonna plug this in yet because I'm actually gonna tie it into the rest of the RGB uh, that's gonna be in our case. So I will use a jumper from the fans installed in our case uh, on this here and then connect those to a header on the motherboard. Uh, but that's our motherboard all ready for installation. So we're gonna go ahead and prep the case. All right, so we have our case prepped. Uh, we went ahead and took off uh, the glass side panel and the rear panel here. Uh, we went ahead and took all of the uh, hardware that comes bundled down here at the bottom out as well. Uh, so the very first thing we're gonna do is install our rear IO shield back here behind the rear fan. It is oriented only one way. You can kind of tell by reading the direction of the letters. Of course, they're gonna make it legible. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this guy in. All right, and there we go. It's our rear IO shield all installed. And we're now ready to go ahead and install our motherboard. So to install our motherboard, um, I recommend picking it up, as you can see here, by the cooler. That's the easiest way to do it. You're not gonna hurt anything or damage anything. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we don't cover up uh, this fan cable. 
We're gonna line it up using uh, the rear I.O. here and slide it in. And there we are. So you should start to see uh, your mounting points line up. And if you see those uh, screw holes with threads beneath them, that means you did everything right. And now we can go ahead and start screwing in the motherboard to keep it in the case. And after screwing in and installing our motherboard, we're now gonna go ahead and route all the front panel connectors uh, through their respective grommets, whatever's closest, uh, and plug them in. Okay, so I went ahead and ran the front panel connectors, so our power button, our reset switch, and power LED through this grommet, as well as our USB 3.0 front header, our HD audio, and our front panel USB 2.0 come through the two cutouts at the bottom here. I'm gonna go left to right. So we're gonna start with HD audio. You're gonna notice it has a missing pin. You're gonna line that up with the dead pin on the motherboard and plug it in. Next, we're gonna do our USB 2.0. Again, it's got one missing pin. This time it's on a different side, which we'll go ahead and plug in. And now we have our front panel power switch, reset switch, and power LED. They are labeled on the motherboard uh, right down here, as well as labeled in the manual if you're not sure where everything needs to go. So our hard drive LED is going to go on the bottom. Our power switch is going to go on the top. And our power LED is actually a reset switch, sorry about that, is gonna go on the bottom as well here. And now we're gonna take our USB 3.0 header. It is keyed, there's a keyway on the top side here, right by my thumb, and a keyway on the motherboard. We're gonna line those up, plug it in. There we are. So that's all of our front panel connectors all plugged in. We're gonna go ahead and cable manage those, uh, and then install our graphics card. All right, so to install our graphics card, on the back side here, there's two screws, one here and here. We're gonna go ahead and take these out. Now they are captive on this little retention plate. Once you take this plate out, uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove the second and third bracket here. Now these are bend away. So as you bend them back and forth, they will fatigue and fall off. Uh, depending on your graphics card, you may need three or sometimes even four of these slots. Uh, because of the graphics card we have today, we only need two. Uh, as for our graphics card, we went with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 4060 Ti Founders Edition. Uh, this is a great card for 1440p and 1080p high refresh rate gaming. And it's super power push efficient, runs super cool, and it's not $13,000 like the RTX 4090. So we're gonna take our 4060 Ti out. We're gonna go ahead and open up our top PCIe 16X slot. You do not wanna install it in the bottom one. This is a 4X, it's gonna run much slower than if it was in the top one here. We're gonna go ahead and line it up and slot it down. Now with the case, comes these screws here. Same ones you're gonna to use to install your power supply. We're gonna use those to keep the graphics card uh, attached to the case and avoid any sagging. And with our graphics card installed, we can reinstall this GPU support bracket here well as PCIe cover. And if you guys are looking for any toolkits, any parts you see in today's video, uh, we will of course have them linked in the description below. But we do also have everything you see here, including this PC available at techdep.com. If you guys are interested in a mail-in repair or a similar data recovery service, we also offer those. 
I'll have those linked below as well as in the description, of course. All right, so that just leaves our power supply to be installed. Uh, I will note that the 40 series cards will come with this adapter, this guy here, uh, which we're gonna now plug in before we forget to our graphics card here. So that just takes an eight pin, converts it to the new, uh, I believe it's a 24 pin or a 12 pin uh, connector from NVIDIA. Uh, unlike the 4090, you don't have to worry about this one being plugged in all the way. It doesn't draw enough power that if a pin shimmies out, uh, it won't light your house on fire. Uh, this one will be okay. Now you do, of course, want to make sure it's plugged in all the way, uh, but it's not extremely concerning like it is on the 4090. All right, so we've got our Thermal Take Smart 500 watt, uh, 80 plus power supply here. To install this, we're gonna go ahead and slide it in the back here, right in this side, uh, like, like so on the other side, of course. Uh, and then we'll go ahead, wire this up, cable manage everything, and then check it out. Okay, so we've got all of our connectors plugged in, as you can see up here, our eight pin EPS uh, CPU power connector our 24 pin uh, motherboard connector and our graphics card with the adapter to a eight pin. Flip it over just to show you guys it's all cable managed. And as you can see here, everything is all nicely cable managed and tidy. So we will go ahead, plug the unit in and make sure everything works. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug in our power supply, make sure it's on and hit our power button. And there we go, looks like everything's good. We just have to install Windows uh, and the various games and programs that our client wants installed on this one. Uh, but that's gonna wrap up today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, again, if you guys saw any parts or tools you need in today's video, they'll be linked in the description below. If you guys are looking or interested in picking up your very own gaming PC, uh, we have an entire lineup of Spectrum PCs as well as offering uh, custom-built PCs tailored to your games, price range, whatever you guys want, we can do it for you. Uh, we offer mail-in repair and data recovery service as well. Uh, but thank you guys again for watching. We'll see you guys in the next episode.